flower horn. Can we have a roll call, please? Dr. Rouch? Here. West? Here. Dr. Bush? Here. Square? Here. Mr. Jane? Here. All the present. Dr. Number Jones, please. Uh, Mr. West, Mr. Uh, Phil Mr. 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 To make it be uh, 5.8. Okay. 7.8? 7. 7. That's an action item. Right. I thought it was an action item. I wanted to point out maybe we could make it be a presentation and we can act on it in time for action items. Okay. Wait a minute. 8.5. Oh, you did the consent item, right? Uh -oh. You said 7.8? No, I wanted to again. 8.5, move it up to 5.8. Oh, as a present. Oh, 5.8. Right. Okay. And then we kind of go to it and leave it where it is and hold on. Take action. Okay. We have to make it to what, like 5.6 before we go back up right in the day. After 5.5. Eight. Let's make it five. Make it five point six. Okay. 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 All right. Anything else need to be changed or not? Let me get the motion to adopt the agenda. Mr. Chair, I move that we adopt the agenda as amended. Second. Okay. Accept it all in favor. Aye. 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 Pass it by zero. Uh, item number four for the company. No. No. Okay. Number five, <coughs> recognition is 5.1 school board recognition week, which is the Hey, Mr. Butcher, Mr. James, and members of the board. Uh, Butcher talking about chopping cotton. I don't know anything about that. But on behalf of the Braden Administration Building, we would like to present you all with these tokens of appreciation in these nice, pretty bags. <laughs> 
At this time, the principals from uh, each school will come in there. All the way. chosen to represent uh, Congressional District Number 2 um, for their essay and speaking contest, the Mississippi School Board Association Speaking and Essay Contest. 
and she was, is the recipient of a $1,000 award, and she will read her essay at the Mississippi School Board's annual conference in Jackson on next Tuesday, and that is Ms. Sierra Dampy. <laughs> At this time, I would also like to recognize a student who has done exceptionally well on the ACT on her 10th grade year. We know the importance of the ACT. We know that that's where the money is when it comes to schools and scholarships. And this student is a 10th grade student. In her very first time taking the ACT, she scored a 29 composite. in the state of Mississippi when it comes to her composite score, and she even made a 34 in the reading sub uh, category. And this student is Miss Angelica King. Uh -huh. So for Nancy High School, uh, this certificate is presented to our students uh, in special recognition for her honorable mention in the 2022 Promote the Vote Essay Contest for her essay on Why Vote. And so we're here today to recognize Ms. Kalina Cobb. Yes, ma'am. I mean, yes, sir. Yes, because I'm the oldest person in here. Congratulations, John. Let me get a good photo. You can photo shop anything you need. Congratulations. Selena, all right, Selena. Now we have Mr. Mark LaFrance. Good afternoon. This is James on the board. Good to Ms. McDonald. Today we have with us uh, Mr. Mark LaFrance, who works very closely with us in Fallon. He does an artist and uh, residency training, teaching students how to do wonderful photography. Uh, the young lady that was just recognized as one of, her, one of his students. Ms. Green is our digital media teacher. They work closely together during the year on teaching students how the fine arts of the college. So I'm going to let Ms. LeFranc in the spring time. Very briefly, uh, we took the uh, students in the digital media technology program around matches to create a photo exhibit called My Matches. In the process, besides photographing the elements that you see here and the places, they learn about the places. So it was a dual purpose, actually three purposes, not just to get them out of the class, but to learn about their own community and to portray their own community in a way they may never have without being in that program and experiencing the art of photography and the art of editing their own images. So we're very proud of it. This exhibit will travel around the community and stay at various places 
So the Natchez folks and the area folks can see what a good job these students have done and what good work is being done at Bell. Mr. James, members of the board, it's great to be a bulldog. Amen. And you see that the auditorium is full today. I want to thank you all for not putting 0212 on the stir, <laughs> answering the call, and getting those uh, invitations that you received at school because. We are going to recognize some very, very special students today. Um, they are a big reason as to why the Natchez Adams School District is a B-rated school district. And it's a testament to them and their hard work, their parents, their teachers, administrators, and everybody involved. We want all of our students to be proficient. That's what we strive for. But the students here in this room that's before you, they scored advanced on the map test. So y'all, we're going to call every last one of them. <laughs> All right, from uh, Natchez Early College, uh, she was called earlier, she's not here, but Angelica King, advanced in Algebra 1 and Biology 1. Kristen Harris, Natchez Early College, advanced in ELA, Math, and Science. Mason Bolden, Math. Noah Scott, Math. There's no. Alea Holcomb, Science. <laughs> Kahari McNeil, Science. <laughs> Katie Simmons, Math and Science. Randall Newell, ELA and Science. Justin Callahan, Science. What are you going to get to do? We are all here. Thank you. Journey Cook, Science. <laughs> Tyranny Timmons, Science. Kevin <laughs> Carpenter, Science. <laughs> Raylan Turner, Math and Science. <laughs> Jasmine Ortiz, Math and Science. Daryl Green, ELA. Jaden Ford, ELA. 
David Jackson, ELA. Michaela Murray, U.S. History. Joshua Poole, Biology 1. Ryan 
Anaya from Washington. Anaya Washington, Algebra 1 and Biology 1. Morgan McGee, Algebra 1 and Biology 1. Peyton Bell, Algebra 1. Adrian Harris, Algebra 1 and Biology 1. Remember those all advanced students. All right. Jackson, if you would please present those, those students at Nancy Gurney College. At school. West Elementary, Lucas Simmons, ELA and Math. Lexi Borges, ELA and Math. Serenity Patton, ELA and Math. Kanala <laughs> Smith, ELA. Alyssa Kraft, ELA. Caitlin Mercer, Math. Josiah Simmons, Math. Joseph Perry, Matt. <laughs> Rocky the Pope, <Bow> Jack. <laughs> Alex Davis, Matt. Jalaja Felton, Matt. <laughs> Layla Wesley, Matt. Hey, 
ELA. A Raylan Gilliam, ELA. Andrew Hawkins, ELA. Marissa Nelson, ELA. Selena Veal, ELA. Turn the phone off for me. Cora Allen, ELA. Mason McDaniel, ELA. Raylan Shannon, ELA. Jason Campbell, ELA. Kanaya Simpson, ELA. Yeah, Elysia Fuller, ELA. Demaria August, ELA and Mass. Jamari Butler, Mass. Leon Evans, ELA and Mass. <laughs> Kentrell Clark, ELA and Mass. Jalila Evans, ELA and Mass. Thank you. 
Antoine Liddell. You will assist me. Yes. Yes. ELA Math and Science. 
Shaquille Alexander, ELA Math and Science. Christopher Caldwell, Math. Avery Thomas, ELA and Math. Mari Thomas, ELA and Math. That's how you do it. <laughs> Megan Johnson, ELA and Math. <laughs> Kaylee Hines, ELA and Math. <laughs> Kinsley Davis, ELA and Math. Destiny Watson, ELA. Hope Miller, Mad. Kristen Sibley, ELA. <laughs> Tia Green, ELA and Math. <laughs> Jeremiah Bell, Math. Thank you. 
Cameron Sturman, ELA. Dalen Proby, ELA. That's Rob Tom. <laughs> and last but not least, uh -oh. <laughs> Paris Sims. No, sir, that's just the, in the board. Okay, so now we have the. Oh, what you mean? Wait, wait. Go, go back into regular order. Right. Second. Okay, it's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, it passes 5 0. Okay, go back in. All right. Uh, 5.6. The uh, presentation by Coach Moore. Coach Moore. Coach Moore, you see, you have to move up early so you get to practice, right? Yes, sir. Okay. They say that you were in the playoff. <laughs> Congratulations for the playoff, huh? I'm trying to get this. pulled it out at the last moment. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Do it that. I'll honestly take a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, thank you, Coach Moore. Congratulations <laughs> to you and tell your team the same thing from the board. Indeed. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Butcher, Ms. McDonald Green, um, President James, and members of the board. I'm coming to you today for a presentation of uh, athletics. But before I get started, I have Dr. Murray, who is online, and he will be providing a little bit of an update of where we are with our progress with the end. Dr. Murray. Good afternoon, school board members and construction. Thank you very much for the First thing I want to do is just simply say thank you for the opportunity. And maybe first 10 days in the Natchez Athletic School District make me feel like I'm 25 years old. So I, I really appreciate that. <laughs> what I want to do real fast is kind of go over. Can you, can you bag off the mic a little bit, Doc? I'm sorry, is that Top man. Is that better? Yes, sir. Can you, stop? Can you guys see my screen? Yes, sir. <clears throat> you guys see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, this is just a summary work report of the first 10 days of uh, initial activities. We got Mr. McAllister discussed the PDP plan. Uh, I met with Mr. McAllister about uh, staff issues and concerns. Mr. McCallum talked about the vision for the program. He has concerns as well. We did an initial walkthrough, looked over in material, assessed supplies and educational material that we needed. Then we, uh, he introduced me to his classes. I talked to him about my role, what I'm going to be doing. In return, the students introduced themselves. I asked them if they played instruments. Were they interested? I talked about the benefits of being a man. So then we started demonstrating different instruments. Um, Mr. McCallum and I were talking about the, the uh, 
Take them to the dance showcase that's being planned as well. They'll go smoke up they some that. Uh, we introduced the school to basic rudimentals of music, staff, live spaces. Uh, they can wrap up with Mr. McAllister, chips, tidbits, and Emmy's Day. And throughout the first 10 days, I was meeting with uh, the bill from Ms. Mills, and I've been directing more. And I think I had a conversation in Patton with the high school principal. Uh, as, a re as a result of the first 10 days, the majority of the students showed an interest in playing instrument. But also, do not I mean, everybody not don't want to, they're going to just be given uh, assignments for state testing, English language, arts, history, etc. Uh, but the ones that are very interested, they perform with the basic fundamental with reading, music, clapping, tattling, uh, work with the high school band. We're going to work on band fundamentals, sight, reading, etc. Uh, identify those senior high school students. We're going to start working with them on scholarship audition. One important thing is, uh, came up with the auxiliary personnel, the flags and dancing girls. So Mr. McCallister working on that uh, job description. Uh, he's still working on inventory. Some of the things we need to get rid of, some of the things we're going to move down to the elementary school. And he's going to submit requisition for supplies and teaching materials. Uh, with the new students, we've been working with mouthpieces, put them on instruments, again, preparing a sign of another band, and we just continue to evaluate students on, on instruments throughout the week. We just been basically putting on instruments, finding who can do, who can, and just begin to roll. But most importantly, uh, preparing those 12 graders for the scholarship audition, and we just basically been dealing with preparing for graduation, public service fans, all those good things. Uh, but for his comments, some very exceptional attacking students, a lot of good potential. More students are getting engaged, getting engaged. But some concerns are, Getting those teaching materials and supplies in. I'm using some of my stuff. I have books and things that I need. Uh, one issue that we really need to look at is that band booster organization. We're going to look at that and redefine what and how they do things. I think they do a good job, but in terms of efficiency, institutional control, and protocols, we're going to do a little treatment with that. And we continue to uh, work on the field of the band room, getting stuff out of there, moving things around. and. Uh, Basically, just get that learning out of your place. And if you have any questions for me, you have my gifts. Anyone have any questions? I just think that in this short period of time, uh, <clears throat> he is doing amazing from what I heard and what I've seen, especially from parent comments. So um, thank you all for getting us back on track because you know we've always had a good band. Uh, Absolutely. We've always had we we'll always had scholarship availabilities for these for students out of this area. So let's bring the band yeah. back, baby. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. And so that one know a lot of because things that we're church. doing now, and I and I tell this every time we talk, a lot of things that we're doing should have been done around August, September. But we're gonna we're gonna put them on definite fast track. And just like Mr. Butcher said, if the horn in the district by we need to put a horn in the student's hand. So that's, that's, that's the end game. We're going to make sure we use all our resources to do what we can to provide the best musical, academic, and social experience for our student musicians. Amen. Um, Thank you, sir. Uh, just quickly piggyback off what Dr. Murray said, um, he's doing a really great job over there. He and um, Mr. McAllister, they have hit the ground running a couple days. I came in and just stayed in throughout the day to see what was going on. And the goal from the beginning was major recruitment and retention. And like Dr. Murray said, one major goal is to have a child with every horn that we have available. So when we took a big hit during COVID, where we dropped down from maybe 60, 70 kids to 20, 15 kids, we are already bringing those numbers back up. And right now, I think we're looking at a close to 50 and getting ready to get over the edge. So the kids instantly come in, they've instantly been brought in, um, recruited, they're excited, they're getting ready to be placed on their horns. And I think that Dr. Murray and Ms. McAllister are doing a really good job of bringing that excitement back about the band. And, and they're teaching structure, structure from fundamentals all the way from the bottom to the top. So that's been really, really important. House and circumstances. Right. What, what, what three songs you say every band's supposed to be able to play? 
Say again. What three songs you say every band supposed to be able to play? They have to play the the Stuck Spain Bell. <laughs> the school song. And pump the circumstances. <laughs> if there's those three songs, you, 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 you got the mission going on. <laughs> and they got those songs for awful else. So those are some of the things that we're working with the high school band on. But like I said, uh, we are to the ground for running. We're going to definitely need some time to move to something. So uh, I just want to put that on the horizon. If there be some type of band enrichment program, because you can't make up for lost time. Because uh, I, can, I can guarantee you, those kids are really working hard. There are a few items that you guys ordered that, that are on the way, but as soon as those instruments come in, we're going to put a horn in every willing body that wants to participate. So that's the end of it. Thank you, Dr. Maria. Thank you. Everyone in front of you, you have. Um, forms in a packet discussing and reviewing uh, professional development for the athletic department, proposed professional development. The goal is to bring professional development to athletic. Oh, okay. The goal is to bring um, professional development to our coaches and staff that is more geared specifically to our needs and our district and our students. <coughs> Um, if you can't find it, it looks like this right in front of you. And as you see, the review of the schedule, there's two days, and they are doing intersection, March 22nd and March 23rd. On the first day, we have inspiration and motivation by Kendall Lumpkins, and his information is listed in the packet as well. He has spoken at quite a few events throughout the state geared towards athletics and FCA. Some of those places he's spoken is Pearl River Community College, Bogachus, uh High School, University of Southern Miss, Jones County Junior College, Lumberton High School, Jersey Davis County High School, and Hattiesburg Public Schools. Throughout the day, coaches are going to be set up in different sessions that are geared towards where our coaches will be. All coaches will attend that session um, that relates to inspiration and motivation. After that, all the coaches will attend a session with Ms. Devonna Smith geared towards academic eligibility to discuss the academics for our students, the requirements that they need going into college, and not just starting them when they're in 11th and 12th grade when they're eligible to receive scholarships and talk to coaches, but actually starting from the ninth grade all the way up their ACT scores and eligibility and what is needed for them to attend the schools of their choice. The next session after that is 10 a.m., building a strong foundation, and I asked Coach Reed to come back and speak to our coaching staff about how to build a strong foundation and want to bring someone that is from this community that knows our kids and knows the community to discuss what we can do to build a foundation not only for one of our sports but all of our sports and build school culture as a whole. Um, during that time with those head coaches, assistant coaches will also be in um, being professional development as well discussing how to assist your head coach in building that foundation because we know that the lead person cannot do it alone. While those sessions are going on, our <coughs> choral and general music will be having their own session to discuss their needs with Dr. Murray and our other consultant, Mr. McCullough. At 11 a.m., we will have Ms. Luana Ware from Auckland State University to come and speak to our minor sports about sponsorships and diversity and how to expand our minor sports like softball, soccer, and how to get more attendance at those games, how to bring more excitement so that we can get more kids involved in those sports. While that is happening with minor sports, our major sports will be meeting with a speaker that I have not selected yet uh, to discuss exposure recruitment, how to have better exposure for our kids, how to get better recruitment, because we have really good athletes. Not only are there athletes, there are academic athletes, there are academic uh, scholar athletes, and we need to do a better job of exposing them to the better opportunities that are out there. From that session, lunch will be provided by BSN, and going from there, we'll talk about uh, paperwork and process with Ms. Lakita Davis and Ms. Queen Morris, followed by the expectations by the Athletic Department of Metro Diamond School District. So that is the first day. On the second day, uh, we'll have Mr. Melvin Davis to come in and talk about student safety with all of our coaches and how we can provide a safe environment for them when we're traveling, when we're practicing, when we're on campus. 
followed by practice planning because it's something that all coaches need to know. And we're not saying that our coaches aren't doing that, but there's always a better way to get better each day. And that'll be with Mr. James Lewis. He is the athletic director of Vicksburg uh, School District, followed by continued uh, professional development with our choral general music with Mr. McCollum and Dr. Murray. From there, we'll have a break. Then we'll go into the major thing, which is Dragonfly, which I will be speaking on, which is our eligibility for our students to be able to participate within the Mississippi High School Association rules and regulations. Lunch provided by BSN and a panel discussion where our coaches will get down and just be able to sit down and discuss issues that they may have or ideas that they might want to bring forward for us to apply to make just athletics as a whole with the NASD better for all of our students. And on that panel, we will have Coach Reed, Ms. Ware, and Mr. Lewis from Vicksburg High School. And that is it. Are there any questions? Any questions? Okay. Is that you, Ms. Boyd? It's you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we want to thank Coach Boyd. That, uh, she had planned to have the workshop early on where it's in conflict with something else. And right now, when we are out for intersection, just like the students were having the session, the coach were having the session too at that particular time. So we just need to How many participants? Um, we have about 40 to 45 coaches, okay. Okay. and they'll be divided into sessions that are geared directly toward their needs. So uh, head coaches, assistant coaches, minor sports, major sports, and in arts. Yeah. So this is your, your real stakeholders discussion. It sounds good. Do we need to approve? Do we need to approve this? Yes, we will. But we do that. Um, it's on day. Well, eight, but we'll approve eight point five. Okay. Thank you, Coach Bowen. Thank you, Coach. Thank y'all. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. But I'm here to practice right now. But if y'all like to come see the game, <laughs> head down to the bar on Friday, bring your pom poms, and get ready to get as loud as you can. <laughs> She's playing her home team. That's my alma mater. Thank you. Most definitely. I'll be there. Oh, wow. Mr. Burris, I'm with Logan, uh, the superintendent, honor roll scholars. You want to thank the National Seven School District. Uh, arts department for preparing students for scholarships. Really appreciate that and let you know that they're doing a great job. It's easy on my pockets, that's for, for sure. Uh, also, uh, for school board recognition week, I want you all to know that uh, Governor Reeves and uh, Cecile Lozano, Lizan, um, the MSBA president, they both presented proclamations uh, for school board recognition week that Ms. Davis will spread across the meetings. You think you want to hear all the way ass? That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and uh, they also sent uh, certificates uh, to each of them. This is from the Mississippi School Board. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The second nine weeks, our superintendent scholars uh, from McLaurin Elementary School, they are on the screen. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> superintendent scholars from Morgantown Elementary School. Elementary School Superintendent Scott. <laughs> Nat 
Natchez Middle School Superintendent Scholar. Natchez High School Superintendent Scholar. Natchez Early College at Colin Superintendent Scholar. Okay, second nine weeks on a roll total, so we had a total of 202 superintendent scholars and 578 principal scholars. <laughs> so with everything that you see, that you see that we have uh, great students in the next down school district. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fields. His uh, five number department for all the hard work that they put in. Oh, you have five? <laughs> five. She five. <laughs> <laughs> she number five. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. And next we have uh, Ms. Mean. Good evening again. Uh, President James, Mr. Butcher, and Jack Ray, members of the board. Uh, we're here, uh, Ms. Dunbar and I, to present the data for the Natchez Middle School. As you all know, we are rated an ATSI school. That's an additional target support school of improvement. Um, and we are given that identification due to our level of growth with a special subset of students. And that particular subset is students with disabilities. Uh, just very briefly, the state cutoff score was 260 <coughs> and we earned 232. So we remain there for that school. And it's inherited from Morgantown. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why we have that. So we're working hard to remove that label moving into 23, 24. Um, so each month you'll see us stand before you and just kind of give you an update on where we are and how we're progressing towards our goals. So if you look at the document, I think you have a copy of it. Uh, you see where our overall school goal is. I'm not going to read that because we talked about that last month. You see what we did for the first benchmark, but I do want to draw your attention to what we did for the second benchmark. So as you can see right now in proficiency, we're looking at 15% reading, 18% for math, and 27.6% for science biology. I want to say this, we are at the midpoint, and as you can see, we're roughly 50% or more at our goals, or a little under for science. But however, we are with the midpoint of the school year and with the midpoint of our goals. So I feel good about where we're going to end up. Uh, percent growth all. Currently, we're at 27% for reading, 24% for math. So when it comes to growth all, we got to do a little bit more pushing in our math growth all. However, when you look at our percent growth for our bottom 25, we're at 31% for reading, but we have exceeded our goal already for math. We're at 78%, and our goal was 70%. So that's one category we have already exceeded the goal. So we feel really good about where we're headed. If you look at the other pages, it just kind of tells you briefly what we are doing to kind of make sure we're putting the work in to reach those goals. One thing is we've identified all the standards that students did not do as well on. Uh, we're meeting with our teachers every week, and what we're doing is we're looking at those questions. A lot of times it's not about what the kid does not know, it's about how the questions are being asked or the misconceptions that exist with those choices. So just kind of talking through how can we help students kind of model the thinking of what they should be doing when they're actually in front of those test questions. So we do that every week. Um, teachers do two weeks of intervention, and then at the end of the two weeks, they reassess the kids. And we're proud to say that our data points on our progress monitoring assessments are higher than our baseline. So we feel good about where we're needed. Any questions? Well, these numbers look good. Yeah. <coughs> we're about where they're headed, so, but we're putting a lot of work in. We just still have a little ways to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree with Ms. Mills. Um, putting in the work, um, just have some steps that you have to continue to follow. So, Ms. Ms. Jones, are you a part of this uh, chronic absence? Yes, ma'am. What, what more can we do to try to get the parents to send students to school? <coughs> yeah. It's hard, Mr. 
Davis and I had to suit up. We go, we go through windows and all trying to reach a parent. Yeah. Because so. I always think above 15% is, this, that's a lot, 26%, that's, that's a lot. The State Department sent out statistics, uh, sent some statistics out pre-COVID and post-COVID, and we just have not been able to get back on the track post-COVID at this point. The percent, we, we have almost about 29% more absentees now before we had prior to COVID, and we just haven't, and that's not here, it's across the state, yeah. They're supposed to have like a round table discussion to see what the whole state can do to try cut down on, uh, on absentees. Yeah, and I mean, I actually see students <clears throat> walk past the bus. So, you know, you know they're not going. I guess the parents think that they've gotten dressed to go to class, yeah. go to school here every day. Every day. And they walk down the street like they're going to catch the bus, go to the side, wait for the bus to leave, and then yeah. go wherever they go. But you know the most likely you're working parents, too, you know? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes when we say no to case, not the parents. They on the first that the child has been attending school. Right, I believe that. Yeah. Even we call them, you know, for five, seven, and ten days, we call them. They think the kid is. So, do the experts think that it's just some sort of the psychological thing of, of COVID where everything was just different? And do the children think staying at home was something okay? and absent not showing up is okay I and mean, what, what's happening psychologically when you talk to these students apathy just general apathy or i think it's somewhere along the line prior to well after covid i think we got a lot we just have to get back up now you know the statistics show that we have a few more students right now who are having uh some uh emotional issues then we had prior to COVID also, you know. So, you know, some of it might be correct and some of it might not be, you know, everything that happens is not right now, we say it's COVID related, mm -hmm. you know. But it, it's an issue because right before COVID, we had just got our absentee back where we need to be, you know. And then when COVID hit, you know, it's, it's kind of like. But employers are saying <coughs> the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Employers are saying it's harder to get people to come back to work. Yeah. So, you know, the students are a part of that that sort yeah, of malaise yeah. that is still with us. Yeah, yeah I think please. it's a part of I think it's part of the psychological but it got used to that. When COVID <coughs> not being in school or not doing certain certain ones did. And so it's hard to get them back to that pattern where they were going to prior to, I think. Yeah. Do you have any insights into that? I agree with Mr. Butcher. Also, you go to different stores, department stores, or food stores, you'll see help wanted in, in, in Windsor where people just don't want to come to work. Uh, we hit, they have to hit, hit the ground, so <coughs> express the importance of school. I stress the other side of, of jail, fines, and that type of thing, and that does make a difference with certain with different parents. Uh, Mr. Butcher, one thing, too, you might want to add that. In the chronic absentee report that MDE sent out, it does also include suspension as well as excuse absence. And so Melvin Davis may have 20 suspension, and it's going to show us if he's, he has those many unexcused absence, when really he's not missed one day. He's just that, that suspension, as well as the medical excuses, also going to that calculation. And I, I want to bring, uh, what you all look at this, we'll bring your attention to this. If you look at our number of fiscal referrals, it's 77. That's actually the highest we've had all year. We normally have been having around 60, and it's pretty, I, I would say that's decent. When you look at an enrollment of 620 plus kids, you're looking at right over 10%. Um, and so some of that is part of that 26% that you see as well. And we are fortunate because we have Ms. Jones who's helping us, her and Mr. Davis, you know, they partner together. Our prison, the guidance council making calls, and McDonald and I are making calls. And we also, you know, the really, really more challenging case that we call in the, uh, <coughs> the social worker. Mm -hmm. And they actually go and knock on doors and, and all those kind of things, so. But let us know, Mr. Butcher, if there is a discussion, a dialogue that can explain some of this. You know, I, I would be interested in knowing yeah. what's going on, if this is a, a larger trend and why. Well, we just sure. stay out there around the table, you know, maybe right. we, can, we can all do something from that. Actually, there's something about it on television, but I forgot what they said. Well, I, I, <laughs> you, know, I, I, I you know, we... we <coughs> nationwide. Nationwide, right. Nationwide. Exactly. Right. That's, I've heard those statistics, and they're not good. 
There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now, with item number six, approval of the minutes. Approval of January 17, 2023, regular meeting minutes, and approval of January 24, 2023, board work session minutes. Can you get approval? I move for approval of January 17, 2023, regular meeting minutes, and approval of January 24, 2023, board work session minutes. Second. Okay, it's been motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It passes five minutes. Okay, approval of anything that comes in item at this time, would you like to move to action item? If not, can I get approval? Mr. Chair, I move that we approve all consent items, 7.1 through 7.7. Second. Okay, it's been moved and second to, to approve all consent items. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It passes five minutes. Okay, item number eight, approval action, 8.1. Good evening, um, Mr. James and members of the board. On behalf of the Office of Human Resources, we wish you a happy school board recognition week, and we appreciate everything that you do. Thank you. With that being said, in front of you is the personnel board report 8.1 and the personnel vacancy list 8.18. It is the recommendation of the superintendent that the board of trustees approve the attached personnel changes and documents. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second on three. Yeah. All right, passes five zero. Eight point two. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Superintendent, deputy superintendent. We have before you item eight point two, which is the approval of the claims reports and the acceptance of the financial reports. Within this section, you will find the claims document for the date today, January 27, 2023, and the financial report for January 2023. And there are also capital project summaries included. If there are questions, I'll gladly entertain those. If there aren't, it is recommended that the Board of Trustees approve the aforementioned claims documents and the five required financial reports as presented for review. So moved. Second. Okay, we we'll move <coughs> to approve 8.2. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 $4,140. I ask the board to approve and accept the unit file bid for our circuit to circuit. I mean, I believe the building circuit RFP. Do you have any questions? Any questions? What's, what's the accepting bid or we have that? We accept it. No, we accept it. The unit file won the bid project of the, the price was $4,140. So that was the lowest bid of that. Yes, okay. Yeah, that was the lowest right bid. Right there, they got one for $7,600. Oh, okay. That's an AT&T. Okay. That was AT&T. Okay. That was a, yeah, that was AT okay. Once, once the rate kicks in, the price is going to be $376.20 a month. Okay. Any questions? Okay, it's been moved and second all in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. 8.4. Good evening, um, board. Um, Mr. Butcher and Ms. McDonald. Um, 8.4, approval to remove McGowan Elementary Pre K tuition fee. Um, I have some background information for you. Um, National Adams School District currently houses one pre-K three class, one pre-K four class at McGowan Elementary. There are currently 27 students enrolled in the pre-K program, 18 are general ed, and nine of those students are exceptional ed. With the exception of exceptional ed students, general education students are currently paying a monthly fee of $250. Um, just recently, um, November of 2022, Nassau School District has been awarded a pre-K SIP grant 
for six hundred thousand dollars for two additional four year old classrooms, which were for two four year old classes. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we are requesting removal of the tuition fee from McLaurin's current pre K program. Um, so you want to use that? I'm sorry, um, or you want to use that money to pay the tuition for one of the yes for one class in McLaurin, and then we would have an additional program at WIS. So how many additional students are we looking at? Um, McLaurin, uh, there are to 14, but with the grants, it's 20, up to 20 per class. So, so we hope we can pick up 20 per class, but yes. as you know, oh, we'll, sure be, you we'll, be, mm -hmm. we'll be in competition with the, you know, with the, right. the right. So, right. so the ones that are already okay. in pre-K, who's paying there? In pre-K now? Mm -hmm. Parents. Yep, just, they pay for the general age students. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the pre-K, the exceptional ed students are paid by the exceptional right. ed to fly. Right. So this grant would help us to remove the fee, eliminate the fee. It will be waiting pretty much. Oh, until until the final grant. Yes, until the yeah. yeah. final grant. Yeah. 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 Could this yeah. be a recurring grant? More than likely. Mm -hmm. More than likely. They're, they're really running to uh, an early collaborative grant and a pre-K grant. And the grant was to pay this tuition. Yes, or it'll take care of everything. Do, do anything we want with that that grant? It's for um no the grant that the pre K grant? Uh huh. No, it, it's for uh it's for it'll take care of supplies, it'll take care of right. <coughs> salary, benefits, right. all of that. But it was given to us to to to, to move this mission forward. Yes. Right? And we think yes. the best way to do it is to pay this tuition because we'll get yes. more students. Yeah. Yes. And one more question. Mm -hmm. So will lunch be added to this uh, federal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. school district? Mm -hmm. But we don't pay for lunch anymore, do we? Mm -hmm. Okay, district. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How many kids were paying two fifty or parents were paying two fifty? There were there are nine. Nine? Mm -hmm. No, 18, I'm sorry, 18. 18, 18 generally. Currently 18. And they've been paying this the whole year, two, yes, $2.50 per month? Per month. Oh, Would they be reimbursed? No. No, because this will not start <coughs> now until next year. Oh, okay. Yes, we, are, we will not start the new pre-K classes until next year. But this will be a big boom to those parents, but it also is going to attract a lot more students. Yes, ma'am. Right. Yeah. So those, numbers up. Right. The, yeah. the, the, the three-year-olds that are currently enrolled that will be going into the four-year-old class, they won't have to pay next year. Right. So it'll be they the applications? Yes, it'll we're going to use the same process. And it'll be promoted? Yes, yes ma'am. As soon as y'all say we can move forward, well, she, she, she so move. Move moving seven hours later. Ah, right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank y'all. Eight point five. That's what. That's what we told you. We got the vote on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I move that we approve the professional development for the athletic. As presented. Okay, let's move <coughs> Dr. Bunter. Second by Mr. Webb. All in favor? Aye. 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 Just because I want to abstain. I just want to hit come. I never abstain the whole side. I abstain. Do you abstain or do you refuse? We got one. One of the things. Just put out. Don't put out. Don't walk out. Don't walk out. Okay. 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 Good evening, Mr. James, members of the board, Mr. Butcher, and um, Mrs. McDonald Green. Before you is an opportunity that the Natchez Island School District has to make an application for an energy prize. It is not a grant, it is a prize in the amount of $100,000. It is a part of the Biden administration's allocation of $4.5 million to LEA. 
LEAs have the opportunity to utilize these funds, again, in the amount of $100,000, to help train staff on energy efficient measures. At the end of this one year application period or prize period, the district then has an opportunity to apply for an additional $50,000 in prize money. The monies will be sent to the district and the district will, having fine tuned its plan, um, work with leading industries to train our staff on those specific measures that can be taken to increase everything from them knowing how to um, do energy managers, turning out lights, installing lights. It's just an array, a plethora of training that our staff will go through and it will be done by leaders in the energy industry. The goal of it is to help our staff understand how to um, improve air quality and work with um, our grant manager in seeking other opportunities to help us renovate our building with a focus on a previously written application where we are also seeking funds for um, replacing lights and doors in our three elementary schools and our other site over on George F. F. West Boulevard. It is the superintendent's recommendation that the Board of Trustees support this endeavor that permits the Natchez Island School District to submit an application for the energy class prize in the amount of $100,000 for phase one. And if we are, um, are selected uh, by the Department of Energy, an additional $50,000 for phase two. And since it is a prize, a monetary prize, there is no match. Any questions? So, it's, so for that phase two, it's uh, it's in accordance to how you managed phase one. So actually, you don't it have is. to apply for the phase two. It's all in accordance to how you responded to phase one. Exactly. So we will have to be very detailed in not only um, <clears throat> ensuring staff attend training, but um, the execution or implementation of those energy measures that are given to us in the training. You're exactly right. That sounds like a good competition. Mm -hmm. And as of last week, now 25 LEAs will be awarded. Last week, there were only about 35, no 37. I looked this morning and there are now 44 teams, LEA teams, in this competition. And when is the deadline? It is due February 28th. Okay, I think we need to go jump on this. Well, we plan to have it on February 21st. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. And we were actually waiting on you all's approval. However, a lot of the work has already been done. We were hopeful the board would approve this endeavor, but a lot of, of the work has been done. Is that right, Mr. Dunn? <laughs> so I, I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, move, I move that we approve this grant application and good luck. Second. Yeah, you act. <laughs> <laughs> we, we did this at the last meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 You with it, Dr. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. We got uh, 8.7. Thank you, Ms. Butler. <clears throat> Thanks, she do. Thank you, Dr. 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 Thank you,
Ms. But I, I can pitch it for you with 8.7 in reference to the, the Washington property. You know, uh, we have the $50,000 for a feasibility study that's been granted to us. So along with uh, uh, Ms. Butler and some of the uh, people from Archive, you know, we are working on trying to make sure we get a uh, select an architect first. They're, we've met with them and they've given all the necessary paperwork and all this. Bruce has looked over it also. And he said he don't feel a problem with it. Mm -hmm. This is for that. Is this is y'all for that feasibility study? Right. Yeah, that I Washington spoke to Bruce study. about it. <coughs> yeah. Like the superintendent did. Okay. He said there were no limitations or restrictions or whatever. That's the most important thing. Right. We're yeah. not in any sort of agreement no, with it. No, we're just going to. So we just have to approve the steps. Yeah. 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 In other words, if they come back with a proposal yeah. or whatever, it still has to come back to the board right. that they want to do something right. as a result of the feasibility Excellent. study. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to make a motion that we approve this in a way. Second. It's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Okay. Passes five zero. Okay. Eight point eight. Miss Tennessee. Good evening, Mr. James, members of the board, okay. Mr. Butcher, Mrs. McDonald Green. On behalf of the superintendent, the Office of Human Resources is presenting the Human Capital Strategic Plan Report. In January of 2023, Superintendent Butcher received our district's personnel accreditation report from MBE, which included several non-compliant deficiencies on teachers that are not highly qualified and teachers working out of the area of endorsement. These deficiencies have placed the district in a non-compliant status, which may <coughs> have the district being placed on probationary status for the 2023-2024 school year. In order to keep the district's accreditation stat status in good standing, MBE is allowing districts to clear the deficiencies by submitting this corrective action plan. This plan must be board approved and signed by the board president and the superintendent and submitted to MBE by May 1st, 2023 in order to qualify for review. If we do not submit the board approved plan, the district will be cited for non-compliant status and our MBE accreditation record summary and will be placed on a probationary status. It is the request of the superintendent that the Matthew Sabbath School Board of Trustees approve this corrective action plan for the 2022-2023 school year so the district will keep its valid accreditation status. Are there any questions? Any questions? Okay, if there's not any questions, can we get approved? Yeah, I move that we approve the strategic plan of human capital recruitment and retention. Can we get a second? Second. Okay, if we move and second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank all right. you. Administrative report 9.1, 30 day review. 9.1, Mr. James, members of the board, is our monthly review of board policies. <clears throat> this month, they are, there are three policies that with requested revisions. Policy EDAH deals with bus idling uh, and idle reduction for buses. Uh, policy EFA deals with data breach prevention and cybersecurity. And policy KM, uh, it covers visitors to our campus. We're also looking at sections E, F, K, L and M with no request to revision. Those are the smaller sections of the board policy. Uh, on page two of that, it identifies those three policies with requested revisions and the reason for those revisions. Those are highlighted? Yes. Okay. There's no question. 9.2. Move that we approve 9.2. You were going to approve. Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay. Good, good, good afternoon, good afternoon, Mr. James, members of the board, Mr. Richard and Ms. McDonald. Presented to you, you have the January special report. That's for two. We have two million four hundred seventy-eight thousand seven hundred eighty-two dollars and seven cent remaining. And that's for three. We have twenty-one million five hundred fifty-three thousand three hundred sixty dollars and forty cent remaining. Are there any questions? Let me add what we plan to do is bring to you maybe a special meeting before the regular March meeting about the additional funds that you've asked us to look at the top of the set aside. 
And then once we do that, then maybe we can do an RFP to go and start advertising for the uh, for the air conditioning and all. We are we are working on that. Okay. 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 Back tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Nine point three. <clears throat> our board calendar. Okay. Anything need to be added or taken off? Take it off. Just secretary no. Superintendent update nine point four. Okay, superintendent update. We also have a contradiction on the machine. When we'll pass it out to you if you have any additional questions. We will say while we're in the process of passing this out, we did meet with uh, with archives the other day in reference to what their plans are for the Jefferson uh for the Jefferson College site. And I think that for the most part uh, Mr. Moore was in that meeting. Can you give us a brief synopsis of what we discussed in that meeting, please? Uh, yes, sir. Shall we find in the career uh, coaching and all those kind of things? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Mr. Nash, members of the board, uh, we met with the uh, Mississippi Department of Archives and History on yesterday. Uh, they're asking uh, Ms. Blunt, I think the lady came before us some months ago. Uh, they're in the process of getting some uh, federal dollars uh, to renovate. Uh, first, she started with the renovation that's currently going on at the Nashes Indian Village. And then she said that there was some additional monies, uh, <clears> around <throat> 20, 30 million. Let's put this on there. Yeah, they, they have 8 million in hand, and yeah. they need about 20 million to do a complete restoration. Right. A, a complete restoration of Jefferson <coughs> College, Jefferson. which is yeah. behind the uh, Oak Land Building in Washington. And they want to, they will be coming back before the board to establish a memorandum of understanding uh, between the school district uh, and the archives. Uh, they want to partner with our construction program. Uh, they gave Pacifics, for example, they are uh, doing some renovation work at Windsor Ruins mm -hmm. currently, mm -hmm. and how they, the contractors had to go through extensive training on how to actually renovate uh, so that it can come up to the current uh, archive standards. Mm -hmm. uh, so there will be similar uh, things going on at the uh, Washington site, at the uh, college site, as well as the National Indian Village. Did she name a number of students that she's interested in? No. That, well, okay. basically, uh, we talked about how the fact that over the course of the last decade, mm -hmm. uh, the state has kind of consolidated a lot of programs. For example, you know, used to have uh, brick masonry was a standalone program. Dr. Robson, remember that. You yeah. have small engines to have electrical, you to have plumbing. Mm -hmm. But what they've done, they've combined and put all of that under the umbrella of construction and they teach it in units. So you have a unit on, <coughs> on plumbing, a unit on uh, brick, brick masonry, you have a unit on electrical work. Whereas you really need extensive work, you know, which you brought up in the meeting, you know, it's kind of hard to find a good plumber these days. You know, it's maybe two or three and you gotta have your pocketbook ready when they come. So those are the types of, of jobs that they're going to be needing, skilled labor, mm -hmm. and they want to partner with our program. And it kind of fits into what we're getting ready to do with the academy models. So we're looking at making that under one academy umbrella, you know, uh, bringing it into the district within the next you know, year or two. And so it would really be construction management. Yes, it would be construction mm -hmm. management. It would be... Uh, uh, but then, but then they're going to do it with an <clears throat> emphasis on historic. With historical preservation. Yeah. Yes, but I think right. the point I like about it is job shadow. Job so job. You can teach all you want to teach. There are some instances we need to get out and let kids have to be hands, hands on. on. Hands and that's going to keep hands on. on, keep them interested for the most well, part. Well, Jefferson College is such a beautiful setting. Yes. You know, it's a park-like setting yeah. with things for them to, you know, right. practice on. The one other piece that we talked about with her was that, you know, Jefferson College is going to really be more like a, the other one, like I said, of a museum. Mm -hmm. And we were trying to stress with them, not only we need to talk about slavery in that, but we need to talk about the free black in that, who own, who build, because all these nice houses and stuff around here, they would be about about uh, people, you know. What I'm trying to tap into the historical, the positive historical part. You know, kids at this damn time they only about slavery because they can't relate to that. In, in the basics, like, we can't either for the most part. But they want to hear about what happened, who did what, and those kind of things. Right, and you did stress that too. Right, and I think I think Mike might have brought up the possibility maybe 
And we'll be looking out doing Mississippi history. Right. We're in eighth grade. Yes. Yeah, I think she's yeah. yeah. that bird idea. When we do Mississippi history in eighth grade, maybe we can have our own margin to talk about mm -hmm. Nancy Adams County. Right. You know. And craftsmen. I mean, you know, the, the beauty of the craftsmanship that we have here and that we all can share in that in the pride of that. Right. Mm -hmm. And and train on. Uh, it, it was it was going to be dangerous more, but thank you, Mr. Moore. Also, on your on your FYI, I want you to make a note on uh, March the 11th, Miss uh Morris, Miss Morris, who's been responsible for our PTA organization, all those kind of things, kind of like our paint out paint liaison in the sky, so to speak. We want to do something special to honor our ACT students who made 25 plus. You know, we have banquets for everybody else. And it's not going to be a very long, drawn-out situation. We're trying to partner with, uh, you know, with one or two of the local businesses in Long Island. We're going to, you know, play our, play our part too. And it's, it's a midday on Saturday, so you don't have to worry about picking lunch. You know, your people get up at 11 o'clock, get on up and come up here, and you can eat lunch and enjoy the festivities. You know. Yeah. Uh, on April the 15th, Mary Bird Perkins is going to bring two vans in so they can do. Help screen, especially uh, mammograms for the ladies. You know, uh, our members, our uh, breast cancer rate in this particular area is quite high in comparison to some other places. Now you know, uh, males have breast cancer too. I learned yeah. that about a month ago. I think I, we mentioned that to me. Just learning that. I am. I am. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. But I was just making a statement. Yeah. But we want to make sure we advertise this real, real good because, you know, for the most part, unless you have a regular doctor, you might have to wait two or three weeks to get a mammogram sometimes. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, because they're going to bring in two vans. They, Wonderful. For the most part, you know, with Mary Bird Perkins, they can take the image and they'll, they'll have the radiologist to go on and take a look at it. And if they need to have, you need to have some further uh, uh, referrals and they're willing to, to do that. So I think it's something that we... Because uh, Mr. Moore and I are going to volunteer that day. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, yeah. Behind it, in front of the curtains. And I will say, yes, you know, that very often, you know, teachers are some of the ones that put that off. Okay? I mean, because we, we don't take time for That's there. right. That's right. And so having it for a staff that works. Hard for kids is a good, good positive. Okay, <clears throat> I received another uh, letter from the class of 1973 who wanted to have their participation to graduate for their goal in graduation. So we have a graduation meeting set for Wednesday. Is it Monday? Tuesday. 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 Let's meet with the graduation committee and bring back a recommendation to you. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Personally, to it beforehand. Well, per yeah, because personally, I'm just, I'm just say commencement is already long. <clears throat> I don't think we need to rain on nobody else's parade. I think we, we're supposed to be celebrating the students, the current students. I mean, they can have a perception or something, or, you know. But I'm going to leave that to the committee. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Dr. Osborne's service will be Saturday at uh, the 18th. It's Bethlehem Church. The wake is on Friday at Marshall. Yeah. She, she, mm -hmm. I guess she wasn't married. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They call her husband. I you, I you, I you. Oh, that's who I was? Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Okay. You didn't know that? I know I was, but I didn't know he was her uh, 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 husband. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, also, then, you know, we <clears throat> the, thank the Lord the weather has been good for the last four or five days, so they have started setting the uh, the foundation for the parking lots and all. At the new high school, they're about halfway to putting the gym slow down and those kind of things. So we are still making slow progress, okay. slow but steady progress. Okay. That's all I have. Any questions? Okay. Now, let me ask a question. Uh, for the AEDs, is there some kind of grant? 
I don't know if we're going to look at the possibility of maybe, like, maybe going to the Kiwanis. The, the only one that we have right now, the Kiwanis gave it to us, now that's Jacob. So, you know, he's about to be the big thing. You know, they're, yeah. they're a little bit of small something now, you know, but I think that's something that we need. Uh, because, in fact, I think we need to have one in each school. We probably have four, at least four, so we can distribute among the, you know, doing the athletic uh, 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 programs and all, because of the fact that, uh, and I think they're not just having, I just think we've got to have some intensive training how to use it. Right, because uh, we, we had some donated to us <clears throat> Uh, maybe two, three years ago, mm -hmm. with the training. Okay. Like who, who, who doing it? It was very processed training. Okay. okay. The ESSA funds could be used for that. Big homes? I think the ESSA funds could be used for that. I don't know. I have to get quite out of that, Thomas. But I think that, you know, what the plan is right now is to go to some of the business, especially the banks and all. Yeah. And, uh, and like the Kiwanis Club and some of the other clubs, see if they would donate one or two, you know, not go that kind of thing. I may be near the hospital. Yeah, There's right. currently a bill in the Senate um, to do that, to provide funding for AEDs um, through the um, Mississippi Department of Health. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that bill pays. Okay. So that's some of our problems. Yeah, call your friend and tell me. Okay. Uh, well, I'll read yeah, yeah. call today by calling. Then, uh, call to my friends on something. Call the teachers. That's all I have. Also, please look at the list here. This is our, our art department. We'll have a performance on the uh, on Sunday. On uh, February 26th mm -hmm. at 5 30. At the Little Theater. Yes, and I yeah. think it'll be a good time if we can kind of talk this up so we'll have to give you a good representation there, you know? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, please. Oh, did the school board come in? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yesterday, I was reappointed to the board by the, mayor, the city of Natchez mayor and board of aldermen. And uh, my, uh, my, oh. the amount of support that I received was overwhelming and totally awesome. So there are some people even though I called them personally yesterday to thank them for their support and help, I would like to recognize them publicly. First of all, I thank God, who without him, this would not have been possible. My family for their continued support and unwavering uh, love. Representative Robert Johnson, uh, the city of Natchez, Mayor Dan uh, Gibson, Alderman Sarah Carter-Smith, Alderman Dan Dillard. But special, special thanks go out to Alderman Billy Joe Frazier, Alderman Felicia Bridgewater Irvin, and Alderman Benjamin Davis. Ms. Joyce Arsenal Mathis and Ms. Shirley Frazier. The Natchez Adams School Board members, Mr. Philip West and Mr. Amos James. Natchez Adams School, uh, School Superintendent and Deputy Superintendent, Mr. Fred Butcher and Ms. Zandra McDonald Green. Ms. Thea Manusa, she came and she sat right beside me. And I told her that God has sent her as my comforter. Uh, all NASD teachers and staff that supported me or helped me on this journey, NAACP members, and all members in the community for the support during this reappointment. I want to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart because all of you played a role in me being reappointed to the Natchez Adams School District. Thank you all very much. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Witt? No, sir. Uh, Dr. Blunt? No comment. Ms. Witt? On tomorrow, uh, my office will be presenting American Reckoning, the documentary of the 1967 killing of NAACP, Wallace Jackson Sr. And um, 
after the showing of the documentary, I will have our very own Denise Ford, Denise Jackson Ford, who was his daughter, or who yes, who was his daughter, and she will be doing a Q and A session. So if you all uh, would like to join us, please do. It will be via Zoom. Uh, just reach out to me, and I will send you the link. And plus, I posted it on my Facebook page. So if you, know, you want to go out there and get the link, please do so. That's it's tomorrow at 1 o'clock. It's going to be all by Zoom. It's going to be all by Zoom. This is not the one that came on TV. This was on PBS. I got it recorded. <laughs> I got yeah, but you know, a lot, of, a lot of us did not see it. Yeah, plus they cut a lot the of it. do could have with the deacon the deacon. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah, 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 I got it in court. Yeah. But uh I, I do I do have the uh, I'm not gonna actually show the entire documentary because it was an hour and twenty three minutes long. But I do have the breakdown of the most important facts. So that's what I will show. Okay. So that's it. Do we have anything for Dickens? Do we have anything for example? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> okay, well, I'll uh, motion that we will have a close determination as to the, as to whether we need to go into the second session. Second. We can move in second all in place. Uh -huh. We have closed determination. Thank you all. I'll offer the motion that we go into the second session. I assume this is the motion. Thank y'all for coming. I'll offer the motion that we go into the second session. I want to leave.